Now, for someone, for example, like that soldier who accidentally blew up a kid and was viewing himself as a monster and couldn't sleep at night, what? how do you determine which type of psychedelic to use for somebody like that, whether it be MDMA or psilocybin or even, I don't know, DMT is ever used? Like, how do you determine? We what? don't really know. And not a single study yet has looked at that. Oh, now, that okay. guy was in the study that was MDMA for PTSD, one of the MAP studies. Oh, okay. Um, and... You know, my I, the idea is that MDMA was viewed as sort of maybe for PTSD as um, maybe the right place to start because it's a gentler. You don't have the reality shattering mm -hmm. effects, the full bad trip of just not even knowing one as a person anymore. They got permanently <laughs> insane. Like that's yeah. the flavor of the bad trip on a on psilocybin or LSD. Yeah. The flavor of a bad trip with MDMA is like more of emotional going to those emotional dark places. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I think that was the rationale, but I've recently finished a survey study where we, we asked people, have you used psychedelics, any number of them, MDMA, psilocybin, ketamine, blah, blah. Like, have you used it intentionally for therapeutic reasons? Not in a clinical trial, but just like whatever, whether mm -hmm. it's underground therapy or you just took it with a buddy or whatever. Um, and whether you took it to treat PTSD or depression or anxiety. And we actually found similar rates. Like if you chalk it up to like how many say they it helped and how many said, eh, didn't make it worse, didn't make it better. And how right. many said it, it made them worse. That distribution looked remarkably similar no matter what the psychedelic was and no matter what the disorder was. Interesting. So... You know, it's an open question, but that would suggest it's almost like you could play the old Mad Libs game. Like, give me a random adjective. Give me a random noun. Give me, it's like, mm. pick a random, like, MDMA for cocaine addiction. Like, yeah. probably could make it work. I mean, mm -hmm. we'd need to test all this, but that would be consistent with these very general mechanisms, though. It's not like, you know, the drugs that are treat these, these just the typical drugs used to treat this disor these disorders, which are treating surface level symptoms. They're mm. treating like these core psychological issues that are really all in common. Like all of these disorders have one aspect of people being stuck in some suboptimal pattern. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of view it all as an addiction because therapeutically, most of my work has been within addiction. But even you can view depression and PTSD as a form of addiction, like you're addicted to this suboptimal pattern of thought. So the pattern isn't like grabbing the cigarette, grabbing the drink, grabbing the Coke. The pattern is thinking about myself that way. When I'm, you know, for, when, when I get some ambiguous data from right. the world, someone doesn't look ha happy. Oh, it's about me rather mm. than, you know, this is negative attribution. It's like, there's an addiction. There's a stuckness mm. that's self-reinforcing yeah. too. Once you're in there, it's hard to get out just like with a drug. And I think the same thing with PTSD. Um, there's this kind of stuckness. Um, Robin Carhart Harris calls it a canalization, and so he very much focuses on the brain and the can the the way the brain activity gets entrenched in certain patterns, and yeah. that psychedelics can unwind all of it. Right, like shake up the snow globe. Wow. Or the way Mendel Kalin, um, a Dutch researcher, has done did work in um, in London uh, with Robin, but so it's like you're sledding or skiing down a, a slope, and if it's a well-worn track, like you you fall into the grooves of the previous sleds or skis. Yeah. But like psychedelic experience is like a big blizzard that just blasts the mountain with fresh powder. Mm. So now you're like, oh yeah, I kept following those tracks like into the trees there, yeah. and hit those moguls that like screwed me up. Like. Right. And I was like, oh, I could just kind of turn more easily and take that fresh powder into this area. Yeah. And you still have to make the decision yourself, but you're a little bit less stuck, mm. a little more ability to right. get some traction. And what, so it's interesting to me that like one of the key, this is obviously these therapeutic effects that we're discussing now are, are effects that you get from psychedelics that last a while where you're like forced to like be reflective. Now, how do you contrast that with things like DMT where it only lasts? Yeah. It's like, it's and not five methoxy DMT. Yeah. Or, or I've never had that five methoxy DMT, but like DMT yeah. is so much different than those because it's like, it's not, you're not even in your body. You're just, you're gone. You, your soul ejects. And then yeah. when you come back, often people don't remember a lot of the things that happened. Yeah. So it's an open question, Yeah. but it, 
does appear that there are plenty of therapeutic reports from DMT experiences. Mm. So um, I think there's, it's such a complex thing, psychedelic treatments, in terms of like, what's the mechanism? I think there's a lot of mechanisms. Part of it is that kind of deep reflection during the experience where that's where something like even LSD can be better perhaps than psilocybin. You just have more time, right. like hours and right. hours and hours like to be in the thing. Yeah. Cause sometimes in a psilocybin session, you're like, it's like three in the afternoon and the person says, you know, like being in the room with the person as a guide, like, Oh, I think the effects starting to wear off. I'm getting a little, Oh, I'm, I just kind of like, it was rough at the beginning and now I'm just starting to get into it. And the, and you say, Oh, don't worry. You know, there's plenty of time to sink into it, just relax. Mm -hmm. But you're thinking like, oh, no, they're totally right, man. It's like, I hope the magic keeps happening. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this drug's wearing off. Mm -hmm. you, you got another half hour maybe. But with LSD, it'd be like, oh, man, it's, it's, yeah. Right. Like, yeah, keep your seatbelt on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got another five hours. <laughs> but so, yeah, on the other side, DMT, I, you know, to the degree that there's that conscious and get all of this is speculation. It's not there's been there hasn't been studies comparing DMT to LSD to right. psilocybin that's controlling sure. for all the other variables. Um, but educated speculation. So yeah, DMT. It's like deep immersion. Just if there's con the the conscious thought is like, how do I get through the next microsecond se without being shredded to bits, like right. just <sighs> breathe, you know, just, <laughs> mm -hmm. there's not the time to contemplate, oh, that thing I said to my wife or girlfriend right. last week, was I too insensitive about that? Mm -hmm. Like, what, you know, like yeah. maybe I should call my mom more often, you know, that like, <laughs> yeah. but that stuff can happen in the aftermath of DMT. So we don't know how much the therapeutic impact, like a lot of that comes after psilocybin too. Like, what do you mean the aftermath? Well, just, the it was called afterglow even the old lsd papers back in the 50s but like the next day where someone feels like yeah the drug effect is gone but like someone's still like they're euphoric psychologically been, reeling oh, they can be euphoric it's not necessarily euphoric but it can be but they're just still and there's some sense like it, if it is the the plasticity that's unfolding if that's part of the therapeutic equation that where it may be a lot of the magic is happening and that might be why the so-called integration seems to be important like just the idea of like talking with the therapist and we could probably do a lot more with that because that's all it's ever been done is talking like mm -hmm. what if you have homework during that time oh yeah yeah you know, i think like what if the experience is one of empathy and how okay all right now what if for the next month you volunteer at the nursing home or mm -hmm. whatever you know it's like let's do like some homework during that time right to actually concretize yeah. like those lessons but people there is this sense of often there is an afterglow. Sometimes it's fleeting. Sometimes it lasts for several weeks where the aftermath is more visceral. Mm -hmm. And certainly people are contemplating the experience, yeah. you know, about what it means. And what. so I think that happens with any of these that can often happen with any of these drugs. So, you know, how much is that actual, the thought process during the experience, the trip, and how much of it is that contemplation afterwards, we don't know. My sense is there's value in both. And mm -hmm. if DMT has therapeutic impact, which I believe it does, there's probably, it's probably weighted towards, you know, your integration after it. Right. But some of the lessons like, okay, you don't have the time necessarily to have the deep, you know, contemplation about your relationship with your brother, but at this just like mystical experience, unitive level, just this idea of having your self-identity absolutely shredded mm -hmm. and at least having some experience of, of just beyond words of existing beyond the story you've told yourself for a, a lifetime. Yeah. Like that can be there with DMT. Yeah. And so just in the aftermath of that, taking that as fuel for looking at things with a fresh lens. Right. And just the sense of the awe of like, oh, reality can be, like I thought reality was this, like reality is like, I don't even mm. know the edges. Like, right. like what what in the world was that? Mm. Like I, some sense, again, there's a lot of speculation here. I, to some degree, I think part of the value in psychedelics is that sort of existential shock, just sort of like yeah. panning out to be like, dude, like your <clears throat> problems are, here and like like you're alive and like 
just all of reality, just this big miracle and you're a part of it. I'm mm. feeling a lot of myself, my, this stuff yeah. personally to like, it's like, you can't explain like, like sometimes with these experiences, even with DMT, they're like, come out, I was like, this is weird. Like just this kind of like facing this idea of like, mm -hmm. we don't even know why this is existing. This is weird. Mm -hmm. And how cool, like, God, thank God, thank whatever. Yeah. Like, and I don't want to mess it up. Like, you know, like, you, you know, some you know, people are just so thankful for the miracle yeah. of existence. Mm. So DMT, DMT can do that. Yes. Um, of just like, yeah. 